Welcome to an episode of Message and Call. Uh, you don't have to adjust your audio. This is exactly how I sound. Uh, I'm trying to do this, and it's one of those days I am out sick. So let's see if we can zoom in better here. Um, so, folks, um, this is how I sound when I'm sick. So, I'm gonna try this some other days. Let's try this again. Hey there, it has been a couple uh, weeks since I tried to do this video and I have been down sick, coughing a lot and this is one of the things that, you know, where tools and technology is something that, you know, I really uh, am grateful for. I'm able to work from home, uh, that way I do not get other people sick at work. It's one of those things I'm really self-conscious whenever I'm at work and I'm coughing all the way. And I was there one of those days, I was coughing a lot, I could not stop. It was one of those coughing fit. And then, you know, in my, in my mind, I imagine people picking up from behind the monitor, looking out, who's coughing? Uh, and then they're you know, giving me the stare, the eye, you know, it's like all people walking really far away, say, ooh, get away from me. Uh, so it's one of those things, Toast is awesome, where it does allow us to work remotely. It is hot in the car. Uh, one thing I like about my car is that it has the technology uh, to help me stay uh, in the lane. So it's called Lane uh, Keep Assist System, LKAS. It's really nice when you're driving long distance. Uh, it allows me you know, to not stress as much or get as tired. It allows the car to navigate and make sure I keep myself uh, between the lane. Now that's really nice, so I do like technology, I do love the tools that comes along uh, that helps me do that. So one of the disadvantages of technology is that because it only figures out how to keep the car between the lane. So for example, if a car swerves in front of me, it doesn't know how to react. It's going to try and keep the car in the lane. So as I try to maneuver outside of the lane, it's the car is going to try to keep me in the lane. So I have to struggle and fight with it. Now imagine if the system doesn't allow me to do that. That would be a disaster. When I first started my channel, uh, one of the first things that I looked at was tools. I need to find out how, uh, what tools I can use to do you know, something that uh, is viewable. And you know, making content isn't easy. So I did go search online and the first thing I do is find tools. You know, it's one, probably one of the mistakes I would say, you know, if I had to start over, I probably would not do that again. Now, in this instance, uh, wait a minute, uh, if I look at it, it's probably a little bit blurry. Let me fix that here real quickly. There we go. That's better. All right. So, tools does help us create content. Uh, in this instance, uh, the tools is helping making it much better. The quality of the content is much better. But yet, the content is dependent on the individuals. The content is dependent on me, not actually on the tool itself. Um, I am definitely using a much better camera today than I was using when I first started out. The quality, I think, is better. But does it change uh, the quality of my content? Not really. I think most of the YouTubers out there will agree that in terms of creating content, number one is your story. The ability to create good story is the key, not your tools. No tools or process can replace people. The people that are using those tools and process may not know what they're doing. They may just be following a process, but they may not understand the why behind it. If they are just order takers, just think about that. Does it make sense if they don't understand the why and they're just going about their dailies and just you know take whatever orders that's given to them? It doesn't really help us deliver value, does it? So part of Agile is understanding the why behind it and be willing to step out and challenge the process. Now, where does the tools and process come from? Well, guess what? It comes from us, humans. We design them, we create them. So that was based on something before we actually come about and create an audit, for example, create the governance around certain things. It's usually based on us trying to achieve something or trying to solve a specific problem. Now, we've the way things has changed in terms of how we developed software a long time ago compared to where we are today, if there is a change in those things, wouldn't it not make sense that we probably have to relook at our process and relook at our tools and challenge it? Does it still make sense? 
Is those process or tools hampering us from delivering value? If it does, you probably would want to change them. Now, for example, tools such as Jira, Agile Central, or Version 1, they all come with great functionality. Now, most of the basic ones allows us to capture velocity, burn down the burn up charts, it creates those for you, and also cumulative flow diagram. Those are tools that allow us to diagnose a team, to help the team get better. Now, we doubt it. If you don't have those that does it for you, automatically, what do you have to do? Somebody has to spend the time to manually create them. That takes time away from actually figuring out the problem, right? So we want to take the time. We want those things to help people, to help us get better. They are great, but our focus should not be just on the tools. Now, for example, as a Scrum Master, if I blindly follow what data tells me, Velocity is 50 points. Therefore, sprint planning, I'm going to tell the team they cannot exit 50 points. Well, that's not probably the right thing. We should look at how much data we have. Is the data, do we have enough data that tells us the right information? Those velocity that it covers is merely a guideline. Here's a good guideline. On average, you probably would want to take in 50 points. Now, let the team decide if they want to go more or less. That's the right way of doing it. And usually if you lock yourself into those 50 points, guess what? You're not improving because over time, we should see an upward training if you're doing it correctly. So let not the tools lock you down. Let not the tools stop you from getting better at what you do. And we've seen that, not just with those simple tools. On the extreme case, when we see disaster happening, for example, the Boeing 737 MAX, tools took over at that point. The individuals and people have no control and that's really bad and unfortunately that's a really sad thing to see so are your tools are your process helping you deliver value or are they hampering you put it in the comments below i will end with this individuals interactions over processing tools from the agile manifesto bye <music>